beg your pardon. Psalm 46 in your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along. Let's read. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. How many of you of the Church of the Living God are tr in trouble right now or are troubled right now? You know the Lord lives within you if you are of the Church of the Living God, saved, born again, converted. Very present help. He's with you. He's with me. He is with all of those who are of the Church of the Living God. Sometimes it's easy to forget that, isn't it? Isn't it? Therefore will not we fear. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear, has he? But of love and of a sound mind. If you take your eyes away from Jesus Christ and start concentrating on the things that are happening right now today, it's very easy. With uh, the impending door-to-door -door checks to see if people are, are willing to uh, have an appointment with the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Yeah. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 um, this is a very impromptu video um, I beg your pardon I'm keeping my voice down because my wife is asleep also too brethren not doing too well having some pretty significant health problems so if I'm a little off, please bear with your servant. Romans chapter 8, verses 34 on to verse 39, close the chapter. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that has risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now the love of Christ is for those who are of his body, the church of the living God. If you are not saved, born again, converted, God's love is not for you. God's love is at Calvary. And unless you go to him by Calvary, on his terms, broken and contrite, and in fear, calling upon the name of the Lord, you're not his. And his wrath is for you. Especially if you try to climb up some other way like a thief and a robber does. Who shall separate us, those of the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, and converted, from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? It's because we're going to be going through things, brethren doesn't mean that God's love is not for us, the church of the living God. Remember, remember, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. Don't forget that. Don't forget that with what especially is coming. Don't ever forget that. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yeah, counted as sheep for the slaughter. You read Fox's Book of Martyrs sometime. 
I'm sure back then those of the Church of the Living God truly believed that you know they were looking up waiting for the Lord to call them up <laughs> all the times are going to be getting a lot worse here pretty soon brethren see here in America we got this kind of a lull right now but I personally think that when the winter months come, they're going to turn up the volume, so to speak. And the day I'm referring to are, of course, the Jesuits. Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, the one who is being allowed by our Lord Jesus Christ to rule right now on this earth, to control everything. Yeah. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and in, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Back to Psalm 46. Psalm 46, verse 4. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The city of God is Jerusalem. It's the city of the great king. The city of God is Jerusalem, where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to come back and rule and reign from for a thousand years with us. Okay? The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, her, Jerusalem. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. And also the her there in Jerusalem the Jews the Hebrews verse 6 the heathen raged oh and don't they they sure do don't they look at the raging that's going on right now with the psychological operation that they have already accomplished and the one that they are pushing and that is yet to come. I keep telling you this isn't over. There's a low tide right now but then but pretty soon I believe like I said in the winter time those waves are going to get nice and roaring once again. And we are going to see things we are going to see things that, here, especially here in America, I believe we're going to see things that we haven't seen. Even with the uh, even with the past uh, year or two, with some of the nonsense that we've already seen. See, they're building it up. They're building it up. They're working for depopulation. All the heads of these corporations and whatnot, uh, all these uh, billionaire people. <laughs> uh, Bill Gates has often talked about depopulation. A lot of the rich people, um, a lot of them, too many people, right? Depopulation. What do you think the steal of the Jesuit poniard is all about? Oh, to make you healthy, right? Yeah. No. It's a death sentence. My wife and I, we have come into contact with um, those who have, who have come in contact with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And those that we have seen that we know for certain have received that, they look emaciated. They look lethargic. There are those of my my family 
who are really adamant and about health and are so freaked out about germ they're germ freaks you know wash their hands a hundred times anyway but now with all this stuff going on it's like oh boy they received their you know they they met with the steel of the Jesuit Punya themselves they looked horrible and that's good health right the heathen raged the kingdoms were moved he Utter, uttered his voice the earth melted remember there's a sharp sword that comes out of our Lord's mouth with his mouth speaking he's going to destroy the enemy and what do they think they are going to accomplish not even going to last for seven years Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. God of Jacob. Salvation is of the Jews, remember? And we, the Gentiles, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Remember? You and I, Church of the Living God, those of us who are Gentiles, we serve the God of Jacob. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth at his second coming when he comes back. Okay? For a thousand years of peace, the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be a society, a kingdom of farming. Nothing like what we have today. I hope those of you who are watching who are not of the Church of the Living God, I hope that you get to be there with us. Sadly, many of you won't. He maketh wars to wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Hmm. Verse 10 and 11. Be still. Be still here does not mean just sit on your duff, do nothing. No, no, no. Be still. Be at peace. Be quiet. In um, modern wording, chill. Be still and know that I am God. And who is God? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. You know, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Be still and know that I am God. Well, Lucifer and his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, and all the daughters of the whore are being allowed to run um, crazy and rampant on the earth right now for judgment. <laughs> we must never forget. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And he is going to get a uh, praise. He's going to get praise for his name, for his glory. When he returns. 
and sets up the kingdom of heaven. Reigning from Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven, a thousand year reign. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So, uh, oh, what God are you serving? Are you serving the God that you look at in the mirror? Hmm, what about the God of the Catholics? You know, Sosa, the Black Pope. Never heard of the Black Pope? Google it. Arturo Sosa, the most powerful and dangerous man on the face of this earth. The true God of Catholicism. They all answer to him. Remember, Francis himself is a Jesuit. Francis is subservient unto the head of the Jesuit order, Sosa. Okay? Hmm. And who controls Catholicism and the Jesuits? That'd be Satan. And the Jesuit order are the ones that run everything. Some of you be like, well, no, I see Illuminati. Oh, people. Adam Weissop, I believe that was his name, Weissop, who founded the Illuminati, was a Jesuit. Okay? You might say, well, what about the Masons? Yeah, what about the Masons? They're controlled by the Jesuit order. It all links back to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Dear friend, yesterday, today is Friday. The, uh, the what, what is the day today? It's the 23rd, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the 23rd. Um, yesterday, the 22nd, was a really bad day. Um, and this is going to make my enemies happy, who would Want, who would kill me if they had the chance. Um, I, I'm having some pretty significant health problems right now. Not just mere sickness like a cold or flu or anything like that or something. No, I'm having some significant health problems right now. Um, please do, if, if you will, please pray for your servant, please. It was so bad yesterday that my wife and I actually, well, more so, you know, we considered. It's like going to the emergency room. It was pretty bad. But like what we, we like to do, we like to look into things and called up over there, uh, the, ho the hospital here in town. And what they will do is if you go to the hospital, you go to uh, like any like an emergency room, uh, number one for us, we don't have health insurance. Health insurance is a scam anyway. Prevention is the best health is the best health insurance. Yeah. And if that prevention is not heeded, and something comes up to bite you, then you just gotta trust on the Lord and do what you can. Okay, but we don't have health insurance. Neither of us. Number two, that would put us in debt. That would put us in debt, big time debt. And also number three, they would probably try to give us both. Well, my wife, nothing wrong with my wife, but they would try, they would probably infect us purposely with something. Wouldn't put it past them. Number four, they would jam a, apparently a very big Q-tip up your nose to test for this uh, poison crown. And we have the right to refuse it, but you know what happens if one were to refuse such? Uh, because remember, we are under a papal interdict here in America. If you do not know what a papal interdict is, Brother Brian, praise the Lord for it. Uh, did a video on a papal interdict. 
which we are under right now here in America, okay? Um, what they would do if you refuse the uh, poison crown thing up your nose, um, they would isolate you. Wouldn't be able to have visitors. Doctors would probably come to you in hazmat ma uh, hazmat suits or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And what's sad is if someone actually has, you know, what, what, what if someone gets into a car wreck, okay, and, and puts his head into a windshield or something and they got to go to an emergency room and these these Jesuit uh, doctor people who are working for the Jesuit order, whether they know it or not, they're going to jam these things up people's noses and That's, that's the sad part. That's the sad part. For people who really have no... You know, like I said, someone get into a car wreck, they go to an emergency room, it's like they're bleeding all over, they're busted up, and oh, here, let's jam this up your nose to test for something that the Jesuit order created. Yeah. And also the door-to-door -door thing, you know. Um, I heard about that from several brethren. Several brethren that uh, they're talking about sending people out and going to door-to-door -to -door and trying to talk people in to talk people in to uh, getting an appointment with the steel of the Jesuit poniard. <laughs> yeah. Very similar things are happening in, all, in Australia, and, and what's happening in Australia is just... You want to know what's coming to our country here in America? Look at what's going on in Australia. Then, of course, like I was talking with a brother last night about it, you know. They come to the door, it's like, hey, get away. Not do having anything to do with it. See, you're going to be marked. You're going to be marked. You can say, "Well, I'm not. I won't answer the door." They're actually talking about this. This is not being. Oh, y'all are blowing things out of proportion. No, no. <laughs> They're building up this Delta thing, aren't they? They're building this up. That's the that's going to be the whatever wave they're on now. I truly believe. Once the summer is ended and every you know right now, like I said, there's this lull. Once the summer is ended, turn that up, boy. Hmm. And do also remember, brethren. There are concentration camps here in America. There are concentration camps also up in Canada. Not con excuse me, not uh, concentration camps, uh, FEMA camps. Others have documented that, you know, shown evidence of it. What are they there for? Oh, for those who are of the Church of the Living God, trust on the Lord and live according to the Scriptures, and those who refuse to go along with the psychological operation of death, because that's what it is, depopulation. And here we are. Here we are, brother, sister. Here we are. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. You know, 
we pray for so many of you. And um, thank you for those of you who do pray for us. Please do keep us in your prayers. Like I said, um, yesterday was very nerve-wracking. Um, if I die, I'm going to go be with the Lord. The thing that was troubling to me was that if I die, I'm gonna, my wife is going to be without a husband. And I know, I know that my father will provide and take care of my wife gloriously. I know that. I know that. But see, as a husband, it is my job to provide for my wife and to protect my wife. My wife... My wife is at the age where fending for herself would be most difficult. And when you take on the responsibility of marriage, of being married unto a uh, those uh, unto one who is of the church of the living God. When you take that on, you are responsible to provide, to protect, to instruct. I'm speaking obviously from the male perspective. Um, uh, for women, I have a two-part video, uh, The Woman of God. Go ahead and look that up if you're curious. But we as men, who have wives. See, I have to die to in order to protect my wife. I would die to protect my wife. And to have some health issue. That that was that was troubling. That was troubling. Even though I know if something were to happen to me, I, I do truly believe I know brethren who would probably step up and, you know, be there for my wife, their sister. But nevertheless, hmm, it's just one of those things, you know. Those of you who, have, uh, who are married of the Church of the Living God, you husbands, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what. Yeah, um, please keep us in your prayers. Please keep your servant in prayer. Um, yeah, yesterday was pretty bad. Yesterday was pretty bad. Thankfully, um, praise the Lord, uh, was, uh, was diverted from everything that was going on by able to um, speak with some beloved brethren. Beloved, beloved brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It was beautiful. Nevertheless, it was, it was a trying day yesterday. It was very trying. And like I said, unfortunately, I know that those out there who are probably praying that I'd be dead. I do know, unfortunately, like I said, there are people out there, if they had the chance, they would kill me in a heartbeat. <laughs> I guess I should be flattered, huh? <laughs> so, and that, like I said, this, this is just an improp, impromptu video. Just wanted to um, just go through a few scriptures with you and just talk with you really quickly about this. I mean, things that are coming there, brethren. It's going to be wondrous to behold the things that are going to be coming. That's why we, as the Church of Living God, that's why it is so important that our life resembles Scripture. That's why it's so important that we sanctify our lives mortify our flesh and be not like the world out there. Go to 1 John chapter 2. Like I said, my, my wife is asleep so I'm being a little 
little quiet. First John chapter two. You all know about Romans chapter twelve, verses one and two. But let us not forget this. First John chapter two. Verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Look at that verse. The lust of the flesh. Whatever, you know, whatever, if it feels good, do it. Oscar Wilde. You ever heard of that devil? Sodomite devil? He's in hell. He once said the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it and the lust of the eyes coveting what your eyes see you gotta get that big house you gotta get that fancy car you gotta have the trophy wife the trophy husband and the pride of life beg your pardon Water and apple cider vinegar. Tastes lovely. And the pride of life. Look at me. Look at what I've become. Look at, uh, look at what I've attained to. Look at my status. And there are those out there who call themselves Christian. Who say, you know, that, you know, God wants you to have all the best. is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. How do you do the will of God? Why don't you search the scriptures and find out? The time is coming, brethren, where sooner or later, wherever you are, whoever you are, you're going to have to make a choice. What are you going to choose? And you know, when they start sending people door to door here in my nation, you know, like I said, um, you could ignore them when they come to your door, but then again, they're going to mark and come back. And then when uh, if they come to your door and it's like, no, get out of here. You know, if they when they come to our door, I'm going to go armed with the sword. And uh, this, this sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, is going to speak for me. <laughs> Lord willing... When they come to our door, yeah, when they come to our door, hmm, I'm not going to say one thing. I'm not going to say one thing. These are the times we live in, brethren. not going to get better it's going to get worse okay and we as the church of the living God as long as we can we have to be those ambassadors okay ministers of reconciliation having the word of reconciliation for as long as the Lord allows us to 
for as long as the Lord will have us to. <laughs> and they, they'll seek to terrify us, sidetrack us, to distract us, you know, do slander campaigns against you and all the rest. I mean, some of the, some of the depths that some of the people who have attacked me have gone to, um, I just, wow, wow. <laughs> Being outside of my nation and sending slanderous information from outside my nation into my locality about me. There are people out there that do that, you know. That's, wow. Wow. See, that's a devotion unto evil. That is a devotion that only comes from one who is of Satan himself. Whereas you and I, as the Church of the Living God, our devotion is unto our Lord Jesus Christ, to live and die as He please. It's, it is, it's kind of irritating sometimes, to be honest with you, when you look at some of the depths that some of these devils will go to to attack and then there are those of the church of the living God who are being just kind of you know passive about things that that's like it's a sad thing to say but um, it's a sad thing to say when the devils are showing more zeal than those of the church of the living God. And thankfully with the people who my wife and I have contact with um, and who have emailed me and whatnot, um, it's not the case with many of the brethren who um, we have had the privilege to speak with and to have fellowship with. You know, like I said, uh, what was it, a week or two ago, uh, whenever it was, um, going through the emails, of the testimony after testimony of how the Lord is working in so many of your lives and how he is using so many of you. But then again, you got to remember, brethren, there are those out there of us, of the Church of the Living God, who aren't doing that. One to you, whoever you are, be still. Chill doesn't mean sit there and do nothing. Still yourself. Calm down. Relax. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Tila. Because what happens when there comes a time when you're not going to be able to get out there? You don't think that's possible, huh? You wait. You wait. You wait. So, uh, kind of like I said, this is a very impromptu video. It's almost 10 o'clock here my time. Um, but I just wanted to share this with you and kind of give you a little uh, an, a little update. I'm going, going through some health issues right now. So um, probably not going to be doing the video for the rest of the weekend. Uh, Lord willing, if uh, the Lord um, allows me to um, get back, uh, you know, uh, Monday, uh, this coming Monday, but kind of got to rest up a little bit because I yesterday took a lot out of me, a lot out of me, and um, today we've been feeling 
whole lot better than yesterday, but um, still not out of the woods yet. So. And if you're one who actually hopes that I would be dead, you realize that I would be someplace far better than you will ever be. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, we we have the Church of the Living God. We know why that is. But with those types of people who have made their choice, who have by their own choice gone past that point of no return, Seriously, uh, what can you do for one such as that? Just hope you're having your best time right now, buddy. I really do. Hopefully, hopefully the pride will be de devastated. You know, maybe if you're brought onto the brink of death, who knows? But uh, doesn't look good. Anyway, that's it. Thank you, brethren, for all of you who have. Uh, Prayed for us, who have helped us. If it wasn't for our Lord Jesus Christ, through you, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's done wondrous things to His church, the body of Christ. And we thank you. Lord willing, I'll see you in the next video. We love you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.